Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I am standing beside the Hisense H100 LDA Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. And let me just start off this video by saying that this is not going to be a full review. It is only a quick first impression because I only had limited time to spend with this projector. It was basically en route to Crankware More Leads to be displayed and it stopped by in my test room. I think my test room is basically an Airbnb for TVs and projectors and I wish that you know I could charge them somehow to make some money. But the other reason why I'm not going to do a full comprehensive review on this projector is that it's actually been discontinued. It will be replaced by newer laser projectors. Hisense call them laser TV because they are pitching them as a TV replacement. But let's go through some of the more interesting things I've found with this projector which I thought you may be interested in. So most ultra short show laser projectors that I have reviewed so far, they come from China and they are much more affordable than this one. But most of them are using a blue laser light engine to try and generate all the colors through the DLP wheel. And this Hisense H100 LDA is unique in the sense that it uses a dual laser color engine. So if you look at this spectral power distribution chart that I've captured using my reference Jetty spectral radiometer, you can see two very narrow peaks here of red and blue. So basically this projector is using red and blue lasers to try and generate the colors. The blue laser will also be responsible for generating the colors for green, whereas red will be passed through as red through the DLP color wheel. And these narrow peaks are going to be responsible for the extremely white color coverage of the red and blue primary and obviously the green primary is derived from blue, the blue laser. And when I put my client K10A on the screen to measure the projector, I keep saying projector but Hisense actually is calling or selling these machines as laser TV. So basically this projector in the UK, it is bundled with an ALR screen, a 100 inch ALR screen. I don't know whether that's the case in the States. And because I'm only spending a few days with the projector, I didn't bother unpacking and installing the supplied ALR screen. I just use my own Vividstorm ALR screen. But let's get back to the DCI-P3 color gamut coverage. When I actually measured it, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage on this Hisense actually measured 98% UV and RAC2020 coverage was a massive 86% UV. And the reason is because of the dual laser. There is no other explanation. And what impact does this have on the picture? The thing is, you have to remember that some other projectors may be able to achieve this sort of color gamut coverage, but they usually have to put a color filter in front of the optical engine to try and widen the color gamut. I remember reviewing the JVC Z1, that's like 35,000 pounds, 4K laser projector, and it is known as the RS4500 in the States, I believe. And when I put on the color filter to widen the color gamut, the picture dimmed quite substantially. And the remarkable thing about the dual laser engine system from Hisense is that you can still achieve the sort of color gamut, 98% DCI-P3 UV and 86% RAC2020 UV, without any loss in brightness at all. And this just gives another dimension to the HDR presentation. Certainly when I watch HDR clips from Spears and Mansell and other white color gamut content, you know, I get this pop and this vibrance that I've never seen on any other ultra short throw laser projector. And the picture is extremely bright as well. I think, you know, when I reviewed the Epson LS500 maybe one week or two weeks ago, I mentioned that the picture is bright, but 
it is not as punchy. Certainly, it's not as punchy as this Hisense H100 LDA because this Hisense projector has a higher ANSI contrast, and also the wider color gamut actually increases the perception of color luminance. This is known as the Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. You know, I'm not German. I don't really speak German and. We first discussed the Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect when I interviewed Mr. Jason Hartlove, the president of Nanosys at one CES, and we eventually called it the HK effect, you know, for ease of pronunciation. But what this effect describes is that the more saturated the colors are. The more likely you are going to be perceiving the color as bright and the entire picture as bright, and that's certainly how I felt when I looked at the image that has been provided by this projector on this, you know, vivid storm screen, and maybe the AR screen will provide an even greater effect. Who knows? But that's from the point of view of the HDR presentation. I'm generally quite impressed. But when I look through a few of my familiar content, I found that the default color temperature of warm in the most accurate HDR night picture mode actually clipped a lot of specular highlight detail, and I had to switch to color temperature standard to recover these blown out highlights at the expense of color accuracy. If I wanted highlight detail, then you know I had to sacrifice some color accuracy, and. Other things that I found out about this projector is that the motion is based on a 60 hertz refresh rate. So let's say if I engage motion interpolation on this motion resolution test pattern, it didn't increase the motion resolution beyond the sample and whole baseline of 300 lines. So the motion interpolation on the system mainly affects low frame rate content. So you can use it to try and smooth out the jitter, but it will also introduce interpolation artifacts and also so bright effect. And the other thing is that if you switch off the motion interpolation or leave it at twenty four film, the projector is still going to be presenting twenty four frames per second films with some telecinic jitter because essentially the projector is a sixty hertz centric. And when you are converting twenty four hertz to sixty hertz, there will be some telecinic jitter and three two pull down. And the other thing I need to mention is that because of the dual laser engine, it causes this projector to become quite bulky and heavy. It is certainly the bulkiest and heaviest ultra short show projector I've manhandled. And also. If you get too close to the projector, even if you are not directly in front of the lens, the eye protection sensor is extremely sensitive. So, the moment you get close to the machine, a warning will pop up faster than Nigel Farage had on when he spots a migrant boat through his binoculars. So, you can disable it through the system menu, and I have done so while I'm standing here. Otherwise, you know. I won't even be able to display an image on screen because the warning will be popping up constantly and then blacking out the entire image to protect my eyes. For playing games, input lag measured 58 milliseconds in PC or game mode on the Hisense H100 LDA laser projector, which is obviously not the quickest, but at least is faster than the. 90 plus milliseconds, 100 plus milliseconds provided by other Chinese ultra short show laser projectors. This projector is available to buy from Quantum Mall Leads, and if you are interested in purchasing it, please support this channel because they have been kind enough to loan the unit to me to bring you this video. So if you can call Mr. David Corner on O double one three two double four double six zero seven. Mention HDTV test, and he should be able to give you an even better price than what's available to buy on the website. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.